everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can everybody just stand up on your feet? Sit right in the
Because of you, my clouds are gone. Are gone. And to you, I, I say, to you oh, I just want to say that I love you more. Love you more yes, that sounds so good this morning. Come on, we're going to sing it together. I lift my hands, everybody. I lift my hands in total adoration to you. You reign on the throne. For you are God. For you are God. God alone. Because of you. My clouds are gone. I can sing to I you. Sing to oh, oh. This song. I just want to say that I love you more. more than yeah, y'all got it. Come on, we're going to lift it together. Everybody say, I love, I love. I worship and adore. I worship and oh, I want just want to tell you, Lord, I love, Lord, I love you more Yes, say I love. testimony this morning. Can we lift it? Here we go. Everybody say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. I will lift my hands and say, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Lord, I Bless his name. Let's take these next seconds. Forever is a long time. I'll always give you the glory. I will always bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Here we go, everybody say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Say, I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Gotta have you, Jesus. Gotta have you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore. I worship.
love you. Lord, I love you more than uh, His presence is where it's at. His presence is fullness of joy. I said His presence is fullness of joy. And it reaches to the highest mountain in my good days. It reaches to the lowest valley in my bad days. I will lift up my voice more than anything, more than depression, more than anything, more than society. Voices. Hold the music. Let's join the angels. I worship. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love. Lord, I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
so clear with talk. So stay by my side. So stay by my side when the sun goes down. Don't want to forget how I feel right now. So cheer up. You are. You are. You are. Oh my God.
Welcome to my good friend, Pastor Chris Rood is here. Come up here, Chris. Come up here. <laughs> we couldn't say this in reverse. This is like the smoothest white guy I ever seen. Right? <laughs> but you guys know Chris. He has brought the word here, him and Dana, so many times. Um, praise the Lord. Somebody ran back there and said, he's the big ass guy, right? <laughs> Notice you got to be careful how you said that. So, so Chris, uh, I don't know if you want to greet us with a word or two or... Let me see, we got a microphone? Of course. We, we might be in trouble, but uh, go ahead and say hello to us. You may be seated. I just, it's, uh, it's so great to be with you. I, I'm just here in the house to worship with you today, to, to glorify our Savior together, to magnify the Lord with you. And I, I'm here to be in the Word together with you. I'm presently on sabbatical, and so I make sure, hey, when I have sabbatical, I want to be strategic about where I spend my time. I'm not here to hide out. I'm not here to go away because my strength and my rest is in Jesus. And so I wanted to be with my family at Crossroad Christian Church in Dover. And I wanted to be with my brother. And I wanted to be with my sister and my, and my family. And so I will greet you in the name of Jesus. God is good. He's still the one who walks among his churches. He's here revealing himself. Come on. And so uh, as pastor brings the word, I'm ready for a revelation of Jesus because I want to see him more clearly. I want to love him more passionately, and I want to scream his name from the rooftop. So come on, let, let's get it with a heart of anticipation. We want to see Jesus through his word today. Come on, Pastor Wallace. Come on. Six weeks. Six weeks. God stirring something inside of you. Come on. I'm just going to let it come forth so we can love him greater today. Let's go. Lord, one more time before you have your seat. Give
I can thank God for what he's done and what he's doing, but I like those old mothers say, I thank God for what he's about to do, not really being sure what he's about to do. But you know that God is up to something, amen? And I just feel such a shift in the atmosphere. I probably won't get done today, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of follow along with the flow because we're on a move. I sense something, and listen, it's invisible, but it is tangible. It's palpable. You can sense it, not in your feelers, you know it in your spirit. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Hallelujah. There's going to be a great showing of his power and his authority and his kingdom of which there shall be no end right in the very midst of us. I believe starting this very moment. Hallelujah. I believe that in your body's healings is taking place right this moment. Hallelujah. Somebody with an ear problem. You've had an ear problem. I don't know if it's your right or left. Now, I got a word. I got a word I want to share, at least get started. But who has an ear problem? Anybody with an ear problem? Just raise your hand. You're healed. I say by faith. Not me. God says you're healed right now. You've already been healed from cancer. You've already been healed from a growth that they didn't have to operate on. The same God with the same story, same God with the same glory. Put your hand on your ear and say, God, I can hear. Hallelujah. I declare that you're pain free. Was it hurting? Was it hurting? Was it hurting? It's not hurting now? It's not hurting now, right? Come on, come, somebody give God glory. I'm going to tell you, you can't mess around. Let's not be, you know, I went to a Phillies game, uh, excuse me, an Eagles game one time. A wide receiver, Irvin Fryer, his son was sitting right in the section where we were, an end zone section, and the Eagles were losing. And you know how Eagles fans are. I'm going to be a fan, but I ain't, I'm mad with y'all right now. But Irvin Fryer got up and said, come on, y'all. Come on, come on. See, we want to cheer when it's going good. We want to praise God when it's going good. But I want to let you know that when the chips are down, when it looks like it's not working, that's the best time to give God praise. You want to confuse a devil? You want to make a demon go crazy? You praise God when you have absolutely no reason to praise God only because he's God. Your ear, ma'am, your hearing, your ear. Is it just your ear or down in your station tube? Do you know? TMJ, healed in Jesus' name. Come on, y'all, healed in Jesus' name. TMJ, healed in Jesus' name. Come on, give him glory. When we worship, when we worship the Lord, when we worship the Lord like we worship the Lord today, with some degree of reckless abandon, it's purposeful. God says, I believe I can get in there. These folks act like they want me. See, ch church ain't church unless it's the God of the church. The kingdom ain't the kingdom unless there's the king. And so we welcome the king into his house. And so whatever needs you have, whether it's physical or financial, I hear a word recovery. Que trabajando sora. Recoto mahati shera. Recovery. Somebody been wondering about what they lost and who they lost and what looks like they're losing. I speak recovery to you. God has a specific word. He says, to the degree that you can be broken down, I will build you up. He said, you want to blame somebody, but it's nobody's fault. There's a devil loose, and he is your enemy. He said, some of the stuff I didn't cause, but some of the stuff I allow because I need you to change. I, I, need, I, need, you to, I need you to give up some of the stuff you're holding on to. Some of the gripes, some of the complaints, some of the grudges, some of the unforgiveness. He said, let go of it, and to the degree you let go of it, your healing begins. Who can receive it? I know I'm receiving that for myself. Amen. Praise the Lord. Body of Christ been too constipated, too jammed up. Man, let it go. Let it go. Let it flow in Jesus' name. Come on, let the praise flow. Glory to God. Let the praises of God flow in the house. The word of God says, let the people praise him. Hallelujah. In the Psalms, it says, let the people praise him. 
and in case you're confused, it says, let all the people praise him. In other words, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise belongs to you. Praise goes unto our God. Lift up your hands. Lift up your voice. Lift up your head. Lift up your life and give Jesus praise. The one and only, the ageless, matchless, amazing God. Give Jesus praise in the house. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know it's dangerous when you feel like you want to sing and you know you ain't a singer. <laughs> Are y'all going to help me? Here I am waiting. Abide with me, I pray. Here I am longing for you. Hide me in your love. Bring me to my knees. Bring me to my knees. May I know you, Jesus. May I know Jesus more and more. Come on, ask him now. Come live in me. Come live in me. All my life. Take over. Anybody want him to take over? You need him to take over today. Come breathe in me. I will rise on me. Now just give him a praise in the interlude. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a praise in the interlude. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel the presence of God. Beautiful Savior. Beautiful Savior. I long you never forsake me. You never forsake me. You're always, always there. The moment it's you that I adore, you that I adore. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus, more and more. I love you, Jesus, more and more. Come on with all of your heart and with all of your soul. Oh, come live in me. All my life, all my life. Take over. Come I will rise on me. Come live in me all my life. Take over. Come breathe in me. Hallelujah. Time. I will rise That's an old song. Look it up and sing it this week. It's a worship song. I guarantee it's going to uh, change your life. Praise the Lord. Well, join me in Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter 3. Joshua, chapter 3. And we'll read a few verses from this text. Joshua, chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed, or say moved, they moved from Shittim and came to Jordan, 
he and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites bearing it, you shall move. Remove means move again. You shall move, everybody say move. move, from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. You haven't passed this way. With all your experience with God, you haven't passed this way before. God says you got to fix your mind because you haven't done this this way before. And Joshua said unto the people, sanctify or set apart, consecrate, meditate for tomorrow. And the Lord will do wonders among you. God, we give you praise today and we thank you for the entrance of your word which gives light to all that are in the house. We pray that we have been convicted and arrested by your powerful Holy Spirit. And we thank you that he alone is the teacher of the church. And because of that, I, your servant, am anointed to preach and teach. And we, your people, are anointed to hear and receive, to believe and then put in action what we have heard. We praise you that today marks a new beginning. Today marks a change. And Father, even as the blue angels are in the skies over Dover, so it is that the angels of the Most High God are in the atmosphere also. And we praise you that they are here at your command and at your behest to work for us who are the heirs of salvation. We praise you that you send us angelic beings, Lord, not to be worshipped, but they work on our behalf because we belong to you. We give you praise for power and authority and kingdom dominion in every way and in every degree. We thank you that we not just have the victory and we receive the victory, but we exercise the victory thereof in Jesus' name. God, starting today, we will not take down from any devil. Right now, Father, those that are in recovery spiritually and mentally and emotionally, those that are coming back from a dark place, a restricted place, an alienated place, a place of grief and, grie and grievance. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that we say that we are free according to the word of the living God and whom the Son has set free, we are free indeed. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. And since it came up in prayer, let me start here. Among all the other things that we are here in this community, we are a, somewhat of a tourist town. We're a capital with a home to some great colleges and universities. But whatever else we are, we're a military town. And I was, as I, you know, God's been waking me up about 2 or 3 o'clock uh, for, for how long it was long. So I've just, I submit to that. And so within myself, I say, you know, I know people get tired of hearing about the military. And you may until you need one. <laughs> so the first part of the scripture is highly military in nature. It's strategic. In, pack, in fact, this passage is kind of a military. It's a, it's a strategic plan. It's a strategic ground plan about taking land. And it's God proving to his people that what I promised in generations past to your generation is about to come to pass. But I need to give you a game plan for how that's going to work. So you get the game plan, but you have to execute the groundwork. Right, right. The reason why the Air Force, the fighters, and I was in Army Aviation, it's um, peace through superior firepower, right? There are people that don't want to be at peace with you, but they're forced to be at peace with you because they don't want to face the power that you have. I'm talking about in a military sense. Are you hearing me? With all the problems in the military, with all the failed weapon systems and all of that, 
we like to consider ourselves amongst the most superior military force in the land. Uh, and so when you join the military, you volunteer. Even though you have to register for the draft, you volunteer because that's the way it works. Now, if the balloon goes up and things get real bad, then they'll come knocking on your door, look for your card, and they'll send you off. Are you hearing me? But right now, it's a volunteer. So most people that go into the military now don't go in with an idea that I'm going to be fighting a war. You go in, my daughter's now a recruiter for the, for the National Guard. Uh, she went back when my mother died. She, she washed out of that class, and I think it's because her heart was, I didn't put two and two together, but the command group sent her back, and she ended up being one of the distinguished graduates. So now she has an additional skill identifier as a recruiter, and she didn't really want to be that. I said, girl, just go ahead and, you know, you know make, make it happen. Do it. You know, you'll, you'll flow into it. But when you go talk to a person about joining the military, you don't talk to them about, hey, you could go to war anytime. You don't talk about all the negative stuff, but after all, the army exists in case there is war, in case there is battle, in case there's something that needs to happen that needs uh, in the area of national defense or helping one of our allies. No, you go in the military now based on what kind of deal you can get. How much college can I get when I go in the military? Will you pay for my tuition? And they will. Will you have tuition assistance and even tuition re, um, forgiveness? Um, forgiveness? Yeah, we'll do all that. How many days vacation do I get? I get 30 days vacation. What's my pay going to be? So you join the military based on the pay and the benefits that you get, but that's not the reason why you're in the military. That's not the reason why God called you into his army. And so this is a reset about why we're here and what God has called us to do. You're to advance his kingdom by taking territory. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And so in this story, uh, oh, oh, let me say this. When I was in Colleen, Texas, uh, some of y'all viewed on the, on the uh, television or on the stream, it's the 41st anniversary. I'm going to try to get through this real quick, whatever I don't do. I I'm going to encourage you to come back on on Wednesday because I was torn between two opinions this morning, which way do I go? And I told Mark, I'm not sure where, which way to go. And then right at the 11th hour, God told me which way to go. And I'm going to take the other um, avenue Wednesday night. So you don't want to miss it because I'm going to address some things that, 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 uh, that were discouraging to me. See, remember I talked to you about the difference between your resume and your record, right? Your resume is a redacted form of your record. So when you go to the job deal, you don't show them all the tickets you have. You don't show them when you were suspended. You don't show them that you was a marginal student in class. You just show them the good stuff because you want to make a good impression. And I think in some sense, we cheat each other of the reality of what it's like to live um, in the Lord and have hard times. People have equated that if you have hard times as a Christian, you must not be on your game. The devil is a liar. And I wish we could get on the witness stand and just tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. There was a day when I did good, and there was a bunch of days when I didn't do good. There were days when I was discouraged. There were days when I felt like quitting, but I didn't. There are days that I told my wife I wanted to quit. She says, yeah, you can quit, but you really can't please God by quitting. It takes no special skill. It takes no anointing to quit. It takes God's presence. It takes God's power to continue on in the vein of what he called you to do. If it was easy, everybody would do it. But God made it easy so everybody should do it. You're going to advance with his power. You're going to advance with his influence. You're going to advance with his word. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not earthly. They're not fleshly. But they're mighty through God. Did somebody hear what I said? Mighty through God. You ain't have to go to the doctor because God healed you. And if you went to the doctor, it would be okay because Luke was a doctor. Are you hearing me? Just whatever what God wants to do. So God is being strategic about what he's revealing to us. And as we read this story, you know, I came across um, this deal a few weeks ago, how that you can read the Bible. You don't have these Bible reading plans. And this person says you can read a book of the Bible every day. And, you know, if you ever try to read Genesis in one sitting, it's, it could be very tedious. But, um, but I'm a reader. And he says, you can finish the Bible in like, what, 66, um, 66 days, right? Just reading one book a day. And the tendency is when we read the Bible, we go through stories like we're going to tap into in just a minute. We can go through them very quickly and miss the point. You know, we think that 
they come out of Egypt and, you know, 40 years goes by, but we don't think 40 years. You know, um, I've been married 40 years. I've been married 44 years. And on the one hand, it seems like yesterday. And on the other hand, it seems like, man, that's a really long time. I'm glad that my feelings about it is that it doesn't seem like a long time because we pretty much get along. I, I need you to come back Wednesday because I'm going to get undressed. Not in a literal sense, but somebody say, I'm coming for that. No. And other people say, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, you could. But, 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 but I was explaining to the new members orientation yesterday that, that if, if marriage was easy, then everybody could float through. But marriage by design is not easy. It's the will of the Lord. It's ordained by God. And you need God's power to operate and succeed in marriage so that, you keep, so that your hands keep going up and they don't end up around each other's neck. Can, can, can I bring you around the veil to, to, to my house? So my wife and I, we're completely different. You know, you want to make, you want to marry somebody when you're young. You think you want to marry somebody like you with your same values. See, they have your same values, but they don't have your same personality. And my thing is, if, they're, if you're free to be you, then you ought to be free to be them. You don't marry someone to change them. Some people really don't want to be married. They want the experience of a wedding. And 45 minutes later, they're like, okay, what's new? And because that's set against the optics of our culture, people don't have a lot of faith in marriage. But marriage is God's idea, therefore it's going to take God's power and prowess to bring you through. So Margaret and I, oftentimes we get into these elevated, yeah, elevated exchanges, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay that she's not a pushover. Some of y'all know firsthand. <laughs> She's not one of these, 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 these women that I got to be married to you because that's God's order, but I could do bad by myself or whatever. She's not that. So she submitted, but she does have an opinion. And she can speak her mind. Y'all just get a glimpse sometimes. But in the carriage on of our conversations, trust me, stay with me, I'm going to a point. In the carriage of our conversations, we'll reach these situations every day where we kind of look at each other funny because we speak differently. I value what she says. Sometimes I don't understand what she says and vice versa. So we have to work after 40, almost 44 years on certain days, on certain subjects, we got to work hard to make sure that we understand one another and to do so without being off offended and to do so with feeling, without feeling like this other person is creeping and trying to control my life. I want her to be free. I don't want her no other way. I want her to be free. I'm blessed the way she is. You understand me? And it's taken me a long time to come to that appreciation. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Give God a holler. Somebody that's working towards that end, give God a holler. You can't love me and love everybody else and don't love your wife, don't love your husband. That's a whole nother subject. You need the power of God. You think because you got married, you can control somebody. You can't control yourself. How are you going to control them? The fruit of the Spirit is self-control, not control of them. When you try to control them, that proves you have no self-control. So we take the time. I say, well, wait a minute, let me understand. Let me, let me come down. What is it that you meant? What is it that you said? And then we finally get on the same page. Yeah. I'm going to talk about that Wednesday in depth because I got a call when I was in North Carolina. I got a call from some people like you. And if I would got that call three or four years ago, it would have put me into deep depression because they're offended. And their being offended hurt me because it's not my intent to offend them. So I want you to remember this as you think about coming back on Wednesday night. My subject will be, can it be fixed? See, we can go all through all the stuff. The question becomes, after all that, after all the time, after all the COVID, after all the, the deaths, the sickness, the challenge, the misunderstanding, the, the, the miscommunication, no communication, I just want to know, can it be fixed? And I'm telling you, I'm still waiting for an answer. 
And that lets me know that we got work to do in terms of our ordination around what's important and how to get there. See, we've spent our years getting all the miles per gallon we can out of a promise God made. A promise is a game plan, right? But a practicum is the groundwork you have to do to receive that promise. God's not going to pour love and joy on the marriage. You got to work for that. You got to talk about that. You got to get in when you don't want to get in. Sometimes you wake up, honey, I, I need to talk. I'm, I want to sleep. But you wake up because it's important to your partner. You don't do stuff now because it's important to you. My list was that long when I got married. Now it's that. I don't need a lot now. You understand? I just want to make sure we write when the sun goes down so that when we get up, we can be unified in our effort and in our assignment for kingdom advancement. Somebody ought to give God praise. Do you still have a hallelujah left? I believe if you encourage the preacher, we'll get through this with a lot more expedition. So just shout hallelujah. hallelujah. T -t 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 Touch a person, fist bump a person and tell them this is for me. I t tell, 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 tell them, I don't know where we're going. I don't know what the point is, but I'm going to stick with this because this is for me. That's the reason why I came to church. I didn't want to come being able to predict everything that happens. I need to hear from God in this stage in my life. The challenge that I have with my marriage, with my money, with my kids, with my job, with COVID, with the government, whatever, I need to hear from God. And when we come on one accord, when we praise God with reckless abandon, God says, I'm going to be in the room with you and I will work wonders. In fact, verse 5 says, if you do what I'm telling you, I'm going to do mighty wonders in the midst of the people. But you right, remember in the earlier verses, he said, one thing you got to do is grab your stuff and... You got to get your stuff and move. Ooh, man, I'm getting hot. You got to move. Let me say it this way. You, you have to move. You can't stay here. I can't stay here. We can't stay here. Because God says when you see that ark, when that presence moves, you got to move with it. Let me give you a little history. You already know this. For 40 years in the wilderness, starting in the book of Exodus, they were led by what we call the glory cloud. That specific phrase is not used, but it's the cloud of glory, what we call the pillar or the tower of cloud that was visible that could lead the people during the day and then the pillar or the tower of fire that would protect them, keep them safe and warm during the night. So it was a actual manifestation of God's presence and his providence and care for the people of God as they went through what they're going through. Forty years passes, Moses dies, Joshua, his spiritual son, the Bible says he had the spirit of wisdom because Moses laid his hands on him, right? So how about if we normalize not being so smart in order that we can be more wise? I know a lot of smart, stupid people. In fact, I saw one on my way this morning. He was looking back at me in the mirror. See, I don't think y'all get it. See. I, I want some people. I started to bring a big full-length mirror, Mark. That was going to be my prop because if you can't hear me, I was just going to preach to myself in the mirror. I was going to talk back in the mirror, right? But how many of you can admit, you, you can admit that you're pretty bright, you're intelligent, you got a degree. We just had some people receive their doctoral degrees here. Praise God for that. But with all of that, you still do some dumb stuff. Can I get a witness? You do some stuff that you regret. You utter some words that you can't get back. You said some things to some people and now they're alienated. Now you're worrying about, can I keep my friend? Are you hearing me? So we can be smart. We can be bright. We can be intelligent. We can be scholarly. We can be erudite and we can be stupid. And part of the thing that keeps us in the areas of challenge is our stupidity. Ignorance 
is a commentary on what you don't know. But stupidity is a commentary on what you do know, but you don't do. There's plenty of stuff in my life that I could be, would be, should be doing, but I don't do. So that's a commentary on my ignorance or my stupidity that God is still trying to work out of me so that he can work some intelligence and wisdom into me. See, I don't want to lord over you as your hero. I'm your brother in Christ. I'm the leader of the pack. I'm the head sheep. But if we're going to advance, we got to make some, some, some hard choices about how we're going to receive the word of God. This is pivotal. Let me just try to get through this portion so at least we, we know to some degree why we came here. This is part of the story that everybody kind of preaches. They get ready to go over. And remember the difference was, let me show you, the difference was that Moses brings them out, they get to the Red Sea, he stretches forth his rod, the Red Sea parts, the children go across on dry land. Hallelujah. Girl, I'm just waiting for my Red Sea to part. No, that's not for you. This is for you now that Moses is dead. Now that you have to accept new leadership. Now that you have to accept a new way of doing things, a new way of looking at things. Because you, you revered Moses, but Joshua is still suspect. That's the reason why in, in, in chapter 3, God says to Joshua, don't worry because this day I will magnify you. I'll make you large in the sight of all Israel, meaning that he must have been minimized. You know on your computer the stuff that's not important you've minimized, right? You make it small. And the stuff that is important, some of the stuff we don't need, we maximize and blow that all up, magnify. God, that's why he says magnify the Lord. See, if you magnify the Lord, everything else becomes minimized. But when you magnify your issues, then we minimize the Lord. And that's why the scripture says in the New Testament, Jesus went to certain places and he couldn't do nothing for people. Why should you be left, left out if God is doing stuff for people? Why should you be left out? It's not on God. It's not on your church. It may not be on your preacher. It's on you. He says, I'm going to do exploits. And when you go across, make sure that you stay 2,000 cubits. What the heck is that? Well, I looked it up. It's about 1,000 yards, right? What's that, like 10 football fields? So you can see it, but don't run up on it. Don't treat it casually. And that's what happens in church sometimes. We get very casual. I will if I want to. You do that until you're in a jam. You do that until you need God. Let's listen to the story of a king that needed God, but he, he didn't bother to serve God. He only served God halfway. And God had to connect him with a king that was serving God all the way, and them two together formed an alliance where God could show up in the midst of all the kings and bless all the people. Amen. Such is this story. The backstory to this is Joshua did what Moses did. Moses sent spies to say, hey, God says it's going to flow. Tell you what, Moses is a military commander. Let's go see. So he sends these 12 spies. Y'all know the story. They come back, and the 10 say a bad report, and the 2 say a good report. And then Joshua, notice the reason why Joshua gets promoted is he's the one to say, look, wait a minute. Let's go up at once. The, see, it's not like your Democratic Party or your Republican. It's not majority rules. It's who can agree with what God said. <laughs> I'm tempted to, I'm tempted to. See, see, you think the more people you have with you, the more authority and the better chances of your win probability. But sometimes God got to get rid of some people out of your life. God got to circumcise some people out of your life. And what God wants to do, what this season represents is an opportunity to have a meaningful relationship with a person that you would never have anything to do, anything to do with. Can I say it this way? The bottom line is you, you need them. You don't know you need them because you don't think they got what you got. But you need what they have even though you can't see what they have and they need what you have because none of you can get blessed without the other. Uh, is this making any kind of sense? 
God wanted to, listen, God wants to connect you with some people, and all those people ain't in church. God wants to connect you with those people, and all them people ain't even saved. But there is hope that if they connect with you, they can hear the gospel of the kingdom and they can get saved. I heard Bishop say one time, he said, listen, they have equity, but you have influence. You don't have any money. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, uh. I, remember, I, remember, I remember we went downtown, and there was a building on the corner, and I always told Anderson, I said, it, no, it doesn't cost anything to look. So we went down, and long story short, all this property down on the corner, we still own it today, and we shook hands with a man I never met. On a $750,000 deal on a Sunday afternoon after church. I'm going to talk about this because I've let that slip. I've let people get in the way. I've let people's words get in the way. And when I looked around, I thought in the bed this morning, and I don't, I've never bragged, but I'm saying this little no-count middle southern Delaware thing, this, this got a net worth of about $12 million. I'm not talking about a ministry I inherited. I'm talking about a place God sent me to. I'm talking about a place that God brought me to. I Listen, we're going to serve the Lord. Somebody ought to shout up in this place. And I want you to know if that kind of prosperity is on me, then that kind of prosperity got to be on you. Oh, somebody hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody hear the word of the Lord. I don't need everybody. Really, I just need one person. All I need is one. God started with one. Adam turned that into two. Those two got together, and now we got a world full of people. I don't need a crowd. I just need the cloud. Ooh, glory to God. I'm feeling something. Brother, you might have to help a brother out so I can shut it down. But I feel like we done broke through the ice. We're no longer the church of the chosen frozen. Some people come to church, they think it's status. It can't be status because you came up in here broken. You came to Jesus just as you were. You were weary, you were worn, you were tired, you were stressed. You're about to give up. Then God redeemed you, brought you out the, the miry clay and put your feet on the rock of Jesus Christ to stay. And no one can move you. I might shake, I might shudder, I might wiggle, I might wobble, but I won't fall down. And if I fall down, the Lord will lift me up. Somebody, somebody got to give God a praise. I wish I had 10 people in here. Glory to God. I wish you could give him a praise. I wish you would shut me down because your praise would be so crazy. Hallelujah. You wallowing in the dirt. You got more than your mama had. You got more than your daddy had. You got more than your mama and your daddy put together and all your people. There's a blessing on your house. You talking about what you don't have. You talking about who, who don't like you. They don't have to like you. The man made a deal with us shaking our hand. Why? Because there's a man in the middle that knew both of us. So when he came to me, he said, let me vouch for this man. He's a legitimate business. And, and the agent had credibility. You see how that works? It's a sad commentary that we don't have credibility among ourselves. We'll trust a stranger. Tell them our whole life story. Open up our pocketbook, and we got a brother right across. I'm saying not that all brothers can be trusted. Not on all days. But we got three strangers standing in the middle of the street on a Sunday afternoon making a deal with a handshake. I signed no papers. Mark, I'm going to raise it up. Can I preach to myself? I hear you, Lord. See, God's saying to me, he says, son, you're rebuked. Because you let circumstances allow you to forget all that. But now I command you to remember. Remember the Lord your God in the days of your strength. Remember when I brought you out. Remember when I healed your body. Remember when I provided for your kids. Remember when everything was going dark. I was the one person that you could count on. Faithful and true is the Lord God Almighty. He's a friend that sticks closer. Somebody better help me, Brumble. Sticks closer than a brother. I feel like a man on fire. Glory to God. Glory to God. But the devil just wants you to forget for a moment 
He wants you to forget who you are and what you've been given and who you belong to and who paid for you and whose kingdom you serve. I want to say, listen, tell your neighbor, don't forget, don't forget, tell them quickly, quickly. Elbow them in the jaw, slap them across the head. Gently, gently let them know you belong to God. You got the favor of God on your life. You got the power of God on your life. Look in your neighbor's eye through your mask and tell them you got the power of God on your life. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. 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 Somebody receive your healing right now. This has happened throughout the years. We've had legs grow out. We've had blind eyes pop open. We've had cancerous tumors disappear in the midst of the service. Receive your healing. Believe God. Believe his prophet. Believe his representative. Receive your healing because God said it is so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whew. We all right? We all right, Marlo? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all. Look at your neighbor and ask him. What you got in you? All that's within me. What's in you? Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all. Somebody say all. All that's within me. I got to bless his holy name. The devil is a liar. I have the victory. Jesus Christ is Lord. No weapon form shall prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare healing and deliverance and power and whatever else you need. Whatever else you need. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. All oh, that is within me. Bless his holy name. I need three people to help me preach this word. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all oh, that is within me. Ask him again. What's in you now? Is there a blessing? Is there a praise? Is there thanksgiving? Is there gladness instead of sadness? Is there tears of joy instead of tears of sorrow? I know it can be hard. I know it can be dry. I just came through a dry place. I didn't think I was going to make it out. But somebody prayed for me. All of a sudden, and out of nowhere, I felt the glory of God hit my physical body, light my spirit, and I'm not the same. No, 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 I'm not the same. Everything has changed because of Jesus Christ. I dare you to throw your weave all the way to back on your head and give God a praise. Oh! Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. I said give God a praise. I'm not asking you. I'm commanding you. You got to give God some praise. Everything that have breath, everything that have some kind of idea that God is great and greatly to be praised, open up your mouth. Hey! Glory to God, open up your mouth. You've been quiet too long. You've been nice too long. You've been cute too long. God said, I want to see a crazy praise, a radical praise, a out of your mind. Insane, crazy praise. Somebody shout! Shout! Shout unto God! Shout unto God! I said shout unto God with the voice of triumph. I don't care who don't like it. You can hit the door because we're going to praise God. We're going to make some noise. Hallelujah! Oh! Oh! Oh, oh yeah, it's on you. I said it's on you. 
I'm looking. I believe one person done got something already. I believe one person, you can see your situation turning around. The ark in your life has already started moving toward the Jordan. I want you to keep up, but don't get too close so that you can see the glory of God in panoramic view. The water's not gonna part because you raised the rod. The water's not gonna part because you shouted hallelujah. You got to go down to the Jordan River with your own feet, with the glory of God on your shoulders. And I promise you, according to the word of God, when your feet touch the obstacle, it's got to move. Ah, it's got to move. It's got to move. I said it's got to move. Now I'm not talking about church. Don't confuse this. Don't confuse this. Because we're emotional. I'm emotional. Your wife can, my wife can tell you. I'm emotional. Sometimes the more emotional I am, I say this all the time, the less rational I am. Right? But you need rations. You need rationality. Because you ain't go skipping into the next opportunity just going, oh, praise the Lord. You may hear it Wednesday night. I know some of you can't make it. We will not stream that service. And we're not going to stream the service, not because we're trying to cheat you, but we're going to change the way we do things. We're going to do some editing and so forth moving forward. So anybody that's interested in the media team and you've got some skill set, we're looking for these three things. Number one, this is Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett? I thought we were serving the Lord. No, you need Warren Buffett in your life. You don't have to agree with his theology. But he know everything about money. <laughs> he said we need integrity. In other words, you got some kind of moral compass inside. You got some gumption. In other words, you don't, we don't want to show up to work late. And if we do, we're going to call somebody. We got Beth sitting here. She's kind of semi-retired, but, but we would call each other. I'd call her when I was going to be late. She worked for me. Wayne worked for me. But I'll call, hey, look. I'm not coming in. I'm going to be a little late. And sometimes I call again. No, I'm not going to be there at all. Oh, pastor, you don't have to call. No, I'm not calling for you. No, hear it. I'm the boss. I'm not calling for you. I'm calling for me. I want to be accountable. I don't want my soul to go out of control that just because you're the big baller shot caller, you think you don't have to be sub subject. No, my soul need that. And when my soul is anchored in that truth, that's why my soul can shout hallelujah because I'm doing what everybody else should be doing. So we need integrity. The second thing we need is a reasonable amount of intelligence and of course sprinkled in with the wisdom of God. If you save, you're always an open, you're open container for the wisdom of God because he says, if you need wisdom, ask. Wisdom, listen, intelligence will never take the place of wisdom. I want to say it again. Your academics, praise God for you. I'm looking at going to school. This week I'm taking the FAA Part 107 written exam for unmanned aerial drones. Because I want to. You got a hobby? Now they tell me that's a commercial thing so you can make some money with it. So I don't know. Do you have a drone? No. Do you know how to fly a drone? No. Have you handled a drone? No. And I'm not going to waste money getting one. Let me pass the test that, that says that I'm going to be legal should I choose to get one. I may never get one. But there's a reason why I'm going through the thing. In other words, it's called self-improvement. It's doing something that will stretch me out of the norm. The next property may, we may get, they want to have an aerial inspection on top of the roof. Look no further. Look no further. I said, look no, because there's rules of the air. This is controlled airspace over here. There's an airport right here. You can't just go flying off in your drone. And trust me, I'm going to report everybody that don't have a license. Because you're a danger. You're a renegade. You got a lot of folks running around in the body of Christ without authorization. Are you hearing me? I'm trying to get done. They're not authorized. They purpose. 
perpetrating a fraud. No works, no joy. Your big mouth don't qualify you for nothing. You gifted in gab. That don't mean you can preach the gospel. You can share your testimony. That don't mean you current and qualified. That don't mean you authorized. Oh, I can hear Jesus from Matthew's gospel, chapter 7, verse 25. Many shall come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord, have we not did this, that? We sang, we preached, we evangelized, we did all this stuff. We cast out devils. Jesus said, I ain't never said you did, but I didn't authorize you. You weren't connected to me. You got to be connected. Don't matter that you selected. No, you got to be connected. If you understand your selection, you will connect. Are you hearing me? Sit down. Let me see if I can finish this, just this segment. So, <laughs> hey, brother, help yourself, man. Me and you had words yesterday. I know I got an ally, brother. In fact, if need be, I'll have you finish this. Don't mess with me. That's how it ought to be. It ought to be the point that any son of this house come finish this. I'm serious. It's the same spirit, the same faith. It's the same. We the same family. Can I ask you something? How come people that shack together, no judgment, man. That's just the world we live in. They live together, got kids, got all this stuff. And it seems like on balance, they can have less problems than married people. Because marriage is the will of God. The world will energize your illegal relationship. But we love one another. I'm not saying you don't. I love God. Okay. We all, <laughs> I learned this from one of, one of the great women of God that I know. Listen, I celebrate you. I've learned, <laughs> she's laughing, because I'm starting to say this to make peace. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So I celebrate you on your journey. I'm going to tell you how cute your kids is and all that. But at some point, you got to come to the recognition that God don't have to agree with you. And he can still bless you. And you think his blessing authorizes what you're doing. Bigger lie never been told. You might be living off the strength of some powerful church praying mother that's up at 2 o'clock in the morning just praying. I know it to be true. I know it to be true. And she see your face, don't know your name, never met you, but she's praying for you. And God says, I'm going to quit looking at you and pay attention to her. Now, what is it that you want? I just want you to, to protect Pookie and them over here. They don't know what they're doing. They're good people. They're not. Would you please save them? Would you please reach out a hand of mercy unto them? See, we, I'm just, we, we done messed up church. Church ain't the end all. He said it last week, and people went, what? No, nobody's doing away with church. Without church, there can be no revelation of the kingdom. Church is birth canal. Church is birth canal. Out of church comes kingdom, Matthew 13, Matthew 16. Out of church comes kingdom and the keys to it. Church is based on revelation that he is the Christ. That's how church is established in your heart. And you're the building. You're the building inside this building. But if this building were to vanish, the building of the Lord still stands. You are the tabernacle. You are the outer court. You're the inner court. You're the holy of holies. You're the place. You're the address that God, I wish I had somebody to understand what I'm saying. And I'm going I'm to help you. Pray for me this week because really what the devil wants to do is take the octane out the gas that your man or woman of God is burning. See, football is get the man with the ball. I don't care who running around the field, just lateral the ball. You want the attention off you, just give up the ball. And everybody starts, they're not after the man, they're after what the man got. So if we allow the devil to get what the man got, I can win the game. Look at your neighbor and say, don't let it happen. I'm going to call you this week. We're going to pray about it.
Let me make my, <laughs> let me make my final point. My subject was <clears throat> I had to rest in Jesus. He said, I got you, son. You rested in me, you relied on me. You can't do it anyway. I got you. I said, okay. My subject was don't miss this food. Don't miss this next move. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me back. If I was Rahab, I'd say it this way. I can't afford to miss this move. God, help me close this down. Can you hang, can you hang with me just a couple minutes? So before you get to chapter three, you're about all oh, to get ready, what we gonna do? There's a backstory. There's a, there's, a, there, there, there's a game plan. There's a strategy that God is using. And if he took church people to use this strategy, they would have never came up with it. Because all the pieces don't seem like they fit neatly together. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Joshua with the spirit of his father says, we know what God said, but we're going to make it as sure as we can. So let's send some lookouts. See, if the man or the woman of God said, listen, I want you to go look and see. Can you see what God is showing the man of God? I'm very comfortable now. God, thank you for bringing me back. I don't see that, Pastor. I'm like, okay, good. I'm excited now. <laughs> Hang around till you do. But we're not going to do it because you see it. We're not going to do it because you understand it. We're not going to do it definitely if I got to sit down and explain it to you. We got wherever we got with some of you and without some of you. I'm, I'm not throwing shade. You understand me? It takes all of us. You know how it is when you get on your tagline, you tell everybody how it's going to be. Then the preacher get up and talk a little strong. It's like, oh, see, he got some kind of, he got the wrong spirit. <laughs> Don't let the devil make you a liar. So, out back that building that's been staring me in the face like an oversized pimple on the bridge of my nose that I can't pop for the last 10 years, trust me when I tell you. We got the permit. We got the resources. That's getting ready to start moving. Maybe, I don't know, Anderson ain't briefed me yet. You say, you don't know? That's why I have Anderson. And those of us that work on staff, you're like, man, I don't know how he does that job. Beth, Willie, I don't, I don't know how y'all, you people in accounting downtown, I don't know how you do that job. I don't have to worry about that. And God said, that's good because you're worrying about a bunch of stuff you don't need to worry about either. I just want to free you from worry. So that's about to crank up and we're going to go till we finish. Are you hearing me? We got, I'm telling you, in 2008, when the real estate bubble uh, um, um, crashed or popped or whatever it was, we had a $1.2 million. I know, listen, I don't have no business degree. I don't run my own business per se. But the first deal that God used us to negotiate, I think was $148,000 down at the old Woodside property. The next, so I'm, I'm bragging on Jesus because I want you to know what you can do. See, I had nothing to lose. I want to help somebody. Who, who has nothing to lose? Who has something to lose? Actually, you have nothing to lose. So here's my advice. Write it down. If you have nothing to lose, lose it. Nothing. I don't have nothing. But then why would you hold on to nothing? If you have nothing to lose, then lose it. If you, have, if you have a little bit to lose, lose that. Sometimes you have to let go of a little bit so God can give you. 
The second deal we turned was the deal for that building across and this property, which they didn't think I knew about. Because I'm telling you, if you're going to be a part of this church, you got to do research other than in your Bible. Bible's where it starts. The Bible's the filter where everything comes through. But I went downtown to find out what they owned. You know all that's public record. Most people know that now because of the Internet. People can look you up, your property, where you live, what the square footage is and all that. So I looked that up. They owned the ground that this is under this building, free and clear. But they was only selling that building. But they wanted a quarter million dollars more than what it appraised for. And before that, they wanted $800,000 just off the top. I said, I don't know how I'm going to do that. As a preacher, I said, I got this much sense. Why would I pay $800,000 more than what the appraisal says? So we got down to $1.2 million. I'm telling you this for a reason, because I want you to start dreaming. I want you to start thinking about what God can put in your hands. I want you to start thinking about what God can put in your heart. With men, it's impossible. If you're going to deal with the king, it has to be so big. Not foolish. It has to be so big that everybody, everybody know. they never told me. But when they come, we have pastors sometimes come to them, take me around. And I look, and I start walking with them. I'm like, wow. I'm like, holy cow, I kind of forgot about that. I forgot about that because I'm not trying to be that guy. I just want to do what God told me. They're like, how did you do it? I'm like, I don't know. I just try to be diligent. So, so I'm a research guy. Y'all know that, right? Yes, sir. So we finally got down to $1.2 million, Pastor. And I almost went. But then I said, now as a steward of the kingdom, that'd be bad business too. Because you're thinking, well, it's going to appreciate. We're not going anywhere. These were Jewish businessmen in Baltimore. Their business runs from Maine to Florida and as far west as Denver. I said, y'all know I can't do that. And then you want, me to, you want me to go to the bank. He said, well, when you go to the bank, you can come back. I'm like, why would I go to the bank with a $1.2 million, asking for a $1.2 million loan or, or thereabouts, and the bill's only worth, um, you know, a million dollars. Plus, I got to put $500,000 worth of improvements into it. Well, why don't you just lease it like the other church? I'm like, I'm not leasing it. And I said, I'm telling you why. I'm not making improvements in your building. I'll make improvements in our building. I want to go back behind because people start making judgments about how you lost your fastball heat, how the anointing is not the same, how things are different now. No, I'm the same person. God seems different to you sometimes, so much so that you even confess to yourself under your breath because you know you can't tell nobody, God, where are you? Are you, is there even a God? All the stuff on the internet now got you doubting. Is there even a God? I want you to know they're coming for your Bible. And the only reason where they, listen, they can take the Bible out of your hand, but they shouldn't be able to take it out of your heart. You ought to know something about the king. You ought to know something about that word have I hid in my heart, not under my arm in my briefcase. This is an active word. This is a living word. So I told him, I said, we're not doing that. So he, he told, I, I didn't, man, I'm telling you, it was the anointing. See, you just want to be anointed in church. Listen, who, who, who had that album, that song says, what was it? Ready for the world. Who was that? U, who? Is it UTFO? Is that right? What does that stand for? <laughs> who remember that? It's an old song, Ready for the World, or a group or something like that. That's what God says, you ready for the world. Not ready to live in the world. You ready, you ready for the world. So he, he puts the amortization schedule in front of me and says, so Reverend, and before I could think, I went, first million dollar deal. I said, they're not doing that. They were like, and, and let me just say, because, because there are people that look like you and me, we doing Juneteenth, and we should, right? We talking about all this black space, and we should, but I want you, I'm just saying for me now, black is not more important than Bible. See, I done turned some people off already. Because that's, your, that's, that's where you go. If it, all things black. 
No, 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 no. I'm dealing with, with white men, white Jewish businessmen that got multi-million dollar business. And I told them, I'm not accepting your offer. I said this, Chris. I said, is the building for sale or not? And it was the Lord. I'm listening to the words come out of my mouth. See, you, you waiting to get ready. You waiting to have enough degrees. You waiting to have enough clout. You waiting for enough acknowledgement. No, when the spirit of the Lord is upon you, you can dance, you can move, you can operate, you can negotiate like David. Ha, glory to God. I need somebody to give him a praise. If you believe it and you receive it, it's possible unto you. Wherever you are, your business, your degree, your connections. You don't need no money. I just showed you we didn't have no money. We had a reputation. Oh, am I even preaching to the right people? I feel the fire of God. It's coming upon you again. Like in the olden days, it's coming upon you. It's like fire in your bones. You're going to go home so excited. That's what happened to me, Mar. We, got the, we, we, we didn't have a sabbatical. We, we could only afford a vacation. So, 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 we, so, so, so when we got down away from this place, because you're thinking, oh, there's so many things to fix, and there's so many things to people to talk to. We got away from this place. Do you know what? I was so happy. I couldn't get to my first stop, and we stayed in some really nice accommodations. I'm like, Mar, this is nice. We should have did this a long time ago. And we about to do it again. I'm just letting you know. Your allegiance ain't to me. Oh, Doc, listen, I'm free, man. I'm free. That's why I got my gear on like this. I said I'm free. You know what I mean? People will hold you. They'll say, Hosanna this Sunday and crucify him the next. I done dealt with, I done dealt with, you know, I done dealt with my people long enough. Let me, let me finish this story. So, so I said, I said, we're not doing that. And they all went like that. I said, but you like 1.2, don't you? I don't believe. Duffy, I'm telling you, it was no plan. He says, take no thought while you're meditating. Don't think about it. Don't overthink of it. Just listen to my voice. Listen with this ear and listen to, with them at that ear. Right? I'm trying to help you because we done messed up Christianity so bad. that we think, And all we are, we are spiritual crack addicts. So unless I get my dance, unless sister so-and-so holler, Unless he hit the E-flat just right, then they ain't had no church. And the church has gone to seed. No, brother, this is a thinking man's pastime. Be transformed by the renewing of your... I'm not talking about your basketball IQ. I got to stop. I'm not talking about your, your football IQ. What's your spiritual IQ? Where's the intelligence of God? Where's the representative? Man, I feel so. I don't know who it is I'm talking to. I wish you would wave your hand. I'll come back and preach to you. I see. All right. All right. I'm going to come back there for a second. I know we can't touch. I'm telling you right now, let the glory of the Lord fall on you. This is like it used to be. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Let the glory of the Lord be on you. I don't know who you are. Let the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, let the glory of the Lord, let the peace of God let the anointing of Jesus Christ be upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Can I get some help? Can I get somebody to shout hallelujah? Can I get somebody to get on their feet? It's on you, brother. I'm telling you right now, it's on you, doctor. It's on you, man. It's on you. It's on you, David. Come on, give God some praise. It's on you, my sister. It's not too late. You're not too old. You have enough. The glory of God is upon. Thank you, Brumble. It's about time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody shout yes. I said, y'all like that number, right? He said, yeah. Watch this now. I'm closing. He, he says, uh, I said, I need to go down memory lane. Your memories of what God has done. That's why we need to testify. I'm going to tell you something else we're doing. I already talked to, to, to media and to Wayne. We're going to start documenting historically what God has done. Elder Anderson, I heard this story, but we have church after the staff meeting every week. He said, Pastor, he's off at a healing meeting right now. I said, go for it, brother. It's all kingdom. I said, but, but here's what I'm saying. Don't let nobody convince you that that's better than this and this is better than that. That's the word. See, a house divided. 
a kingdom of God. You don't get mad at this Walmart and love that Walmart down there. It's all Walmart. But we got churches. We got preachers doing this. Listen, the devil is a liar. Don't be no fool. If, you, if there's any, anything in your heart, just pray. Just pray for them. Pray for their good success. Pray for their people. Pray, pray that their ministry prospers. Because if their ministry prospers and they're preaching Jesus Christ, then all the water in the kingdom harbor rises and every boat, everybody boats sit on top. I'll sit. Can, can you sit for about five minutes? Sit. Don't tempt me. You know, I kind of knew this was going to happen, though. But you got some people. Let me just help. help. I'm, I'm not exposing anyone. I want to expose something. When you get desperate about something, you really don't care how long it seems to take. You need money from the bank. I need $10,000. You'll stay on the phone long as you have to. You'll say, I, I just don't, don't hang up on me. Because as long as me and you talking, there's a chance. We come to church. That devil has wreaked havoc in the house of God. I got to go. What? Got to go? No, you already gone in your heart. You're already gone. Your body's here with me. But your heart is way across town. Remember that song? So I said, y'all like that number? He said, yeah. I said, well, the power of God was in that room, so I'm telling you. This is a short version. I looked over and I looked at my team because we had prayed right outside in people's office in Baltimore, inner city Baltimore. I said, I need to consult with my colleagues. Seriously. I didn't go in like, the Lord done told me that y'all supposed to give us this building. And we done prayed and so forth. Now listen, if that's your flavor, then God going to bless that. But that's not my flavor. I want to be able to talk corporate. I'm a CEO. Not just a pastor. I'm a founder. I'm a creator. I mean, not the creator, but I'm a creator. Are you hearing me? We let everyone else diminish us. And I said, but can we have a moment? I need to consult my colleagues and see where we're at with this. They looked around and said, see, it's language they could understand. They all got up from their mahogany table, 15 feet long. I'm talking about court. All of them were Ivy League. Ivy League lawyers, accountants, and corporate officers. I want to paint you a picture. because I'm tired of preaching this sugar-coated gospel. Make you feel good. Make you feel good about your bad situation. I done buried too many people that don't have life insurance. And listen. We help. But our answer shouldn't be GoFundMe. Trust me, I'm going to do GoFundMe if I have to. I'm not hating, but why does it have to be that way? And you serve the king. No, it needs to be a mind change, a mind switch. What I'm preaching right now, this is how this church got built. You come if you want and you leave if you do. We're going to love you anyway because I don't have no enemies. The last group of people I'm learning to love are my enemies because that's what Jesus said. So if you're real good at love, your project this week is to find an enemy you can love because that's what Jesus said. Don't let them Democrats tell you that. In fact, segue. Segue. Is anybody aware of what's going on in the Michael Sussman trial? Does anybody not know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand right now. Who doesn't know? Raise your hand right now. And I know some of you don't have, and it's no indictment. It's just my thing. Because kingdom is about nations. It's about generations, right? So right now, there's a trial of Michael Sussman, who was a lawyer for the Clinton campaign. I'm not trying to sway anybody, but I quit preaching about it because y'all got upset with me and people left the church because we don't want to hear about that. We just want to talk about Jesus. Like Jesus never talked about Caesar. Do you realize that Paul got to Rome by using his citizenship, not his apostleship? He goes, I'm a citizen, and you hitting me like I'm a stranger. I'm a citizen of Rome just like you. Now take me to see the king. And they had to take their hands off of him. I hope I'm helping somebody. Whew. 
Michael Sussman was a Clinton lawyer, and they testified on Friday. You don't know about it because Friday, everybody getting ready for the weekend. Air shows in town, hot weather, we going to the beach. What movie we going to go to? It's payday. And what's his name? Mook testified on the stand that Hillary Clinton knew that the information they was putting out about Donald Trump was false. You ain't going to hear about it till money because they're all trying to figure out how we going to respond to this. That's why I said wait. Wait before you make a judgment. You judge some things by the spirit and by the quality of the word of God, not because of your party affiliation. And I believe COVID came to the church for us to judge ourselves about our inequities, about our hypocrisies. And you forgive people that are on your side for the crime that you want them to go to the electric chair for. God says that's a false balance. And it's an abomination according to the book of Proverbs. Book of Psalms, it's an abomination, but you want to do church. They don't care if you do church, do all the church you want. Because church ain't changing nothing. Look at how long you've been coming. Is it changing you? Oh, man. I don't know about Stella, but I sure enough got my groove back. Anyway, any, anyway, so, 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 so I told, so I told her, I, I got two more things to say. So I told, I, t I told Mr. Businessman, businessman, I said, listen, I said, uh, y'all like that number? He said, yeah. I said, let me consult. So they all walked out the door in this big office. And the last guy went out the door, then poked his head back in. And he says, uh, hey, uh, can I get anybody anything? Coffee? I said, cream and sugar. And he shut the door and went out. I, listen. You could be in the driver's seat because it's who you work for. Because it's not even about you. I don't know how to do that stuff. But when the time come and when the shoe fit, that's why, that's why for the Davids in the group, a slingshot works. The king's armor don't work, but a staff will work. The slingshot will work. I'm going to use what I got because God has proven faithful with what he's anointed me to use. You busy trying to be like somebody else. You busy trying to turn into somebody else. Be yourself. And if you ever get confused about who you are, then look at your fingerprint under a, micro under a magnifying glass and understand that there are 8 billion people plus on the planet right now and no one has that design. That's how you know there must be a God. But we won't come to control church and all that. The devil is alive. The devil's alive. All right. So they went out, came back in. I said, I tell you what, it's come to my attention that you own five acres immediately south of the subject property. That was that what they were selling, and this was just a field with trees all in it. They started looking at each other. And can I just be real? See, how, how, how that Negro know this? <laughs> I, I told a director of planning down at, I said, listen, listen, I don't have an ax to grind. Our parents, grandparents, our people went through hell, still going through hell. But understand this, the worst thing you could have done is let them chains off my people. And the best thing you ever done was sent me to a school to read, write, and do some arithmetic. And not only do I read and write, I got good comprehension. And so I comprehend that what y'all are doing here is against the code that you provide on the internet for the whole world to see. And they look and they look like, I'm like, what are you gonna do? Well, we're gonna do, you gotta do that. I'm like, no, ho, 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 boss. I'm like, we going to do, you going to do, I'm going to do, they going to do everything that's written in the code that you put out. I'm not talking Bible. This is your Bible. And down at customer service, he's given information that refutes the latest version of the code that you put out. How is it that you don't owe me something, dude? No, we're not doing that. What governs this? The Constitution of Kent County. Well, let's look at that, and that'll determine what all of us going to do. But don't come woofing at me like we're going to do this and that and the other. We're not doing that. Are you hearing me? So we agreed. I said, you own this property, right? He says, yes. I said, well, 1.2 you like, right? He says, yeah. I said, give me that property. Throw that in five acres. 
throw, just throw it in, and I'll give you 1.2. He looked left. He looked right. Why do you think we could do that? I'm like, great. <laughs> great. The payment on that was $9,143. I can't remember. No, in 60 cents. I still remember to this day, $9,143.60. Accounting, y'all check me. Well, you can't, probably can't even look it up now. And I told Elder Anderson, I said, look, first payment due, I said, I want you to get in our vehicle, church vehicle, your vehicle, we reimburse the gas. I want you to drive over there to their office in Baltimore. And I want you to see somebody's face, preferably one of these guys. And I want you to present that check to them face to face. I want you to do that every month, early, so that they know they ain't playing with people. I, you know, whether, whether that sounds prideful or whatever, I, first of all, my soul need to do that, you see? So that's the end of that story. So now you're sitting in the building. Look, that property, listen, Chris, that property was already tax-free. It had a tax exemption because of the previous church. This property was not. If you know anything about zoning, you have a setback from property lines. I told T, I said, we need to merge those plat numbers together. So you think I'm just supposed to get up here and preach you happy. No, 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 children. There are plenty of people that would do that, and I'm, I'm more power to you. But we're going to put something in your head that's going to work in your life. God said, you thought you were studying all that stuff for you? Well, I was because we was broke back in the day. But all that stuff I learned thinking it was for me, I've been able to use in the business of the kingdom. So I said, T, when you go down there, watch what they do. I want this tax number to be overloaded with that. In other words, we want that tax number, which is tax-free already, to slide over to this tax number. You are, see, you're catching on, right? Because I don't want to have to fight them to get a non-tax exempt property because they hating churches anyway, right? That's their revenue. So don't do it backwards. Make sure you do it from this property to that property and it's automatically tax exempt. Somebody needs to thank God for your pastor. Just thank God. Thank God for your pastor. Rahab said, I can't afford to miss this move. I don't have time to go through it. You know it. She heard about it, right? And when Joshua sent the spies sovereignly, they found her, right? It's, it's amazing. Oh, by the way, did you know she's like the great-grandmother or the great-great-grandmother of Jesse, who is the father of David? That's why she's in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 31, and it says, Rahab the prostitute. Rahab the harlot, Rahab the hoe, by faith. It's messing with me, Chris, because it went all the way from, from Abel, Abraham, help me, Gideon, Samson, Isaac, Jacob, this one, that one, the other one. And I said, when it got to Jacob, Noah, Noah, by faith Noah, right? When it got to Noah, it didn't say nothing about him being a drunk and a naked man, but he was, right? Didn't say nothing about Abraham, mighty man of faith, who slept with the girl with his eyes wide open, and that's why we got Ishmael and problems in the Middle East today. It didn't say nothing about that. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't give you their resume or their record, right? It didn't say about, about Jacob, um, the swindler, tricked his brother out that meal. It didn't call him a swindler. It just says this one and that one, and here's what they did. But when you get to Rahab, it says she was a hoe. I'm going to have to ask Jesus why that is. But he, he must have thought that was important to let you know that even you, that even me, that even us, no matter what our past, no matter what our situation, God says, I'm including you in the number with the most righteous of kings, with the most royal of royalties. I'm including you in the number. There's nothing about your life, nothing about your past, nothing about you that scares me, make me nervous, or make me think I don't want to have nothing to do with you. You just come on with it. I can use what you got. I can use what you got. I promise. That was the next to the last. This is the last. This word that I'm about to give you is the word that I had for Colleen. Remember, I asked Pastor Valerie. 
And she made the right move. She said, that's enough for today. I said, yes, ma'am. But the theme I had was don't miss this next move. We sang a song years ago, and the song was the cloud of glory is moving. Let's move with the cloud. Some of y'all remember that? Remember that? Some of my charter member people. The cloud of glory is moving. Let's move with the cloud. Pillar of cloud. The cloud of glory is moving. Let's move with the cloud. The inference is you move with the cloud, not with the crowd. Our thinking is perverted when we move with the crowd. So let's move with the cloud. And then it says, come, let us move all together. That's what you read in verse 5. Come, let us move all together. As we follow his every lead, new heights we will achieve when we move with the cloud. Let's move with the cloud. Now, we've had a good time today. But I'm going to leave you with some gravity for how serious it is that you and I need to be ready to move. Something's coming through here. The blessing of the Lord, the influence of the king. And it will be undeniable. It will come without warning. It won't be any big size. It's just going to come upon you. You'll be laying in your bed. You'll be minding your own business. You'll be out feeding the ducks back, back, you know, back at the pond somewhere, and it's going to come upon you. And you're going to go, I'm telling you, it's happening to me. It's happened to me this week. And it's not for the preacher. It's not for the big dog. Are you hearing me? Tired of the big dogs. Tired of too many big dogs. They can't have no puppies. No, it's no big dogs. Jesus said, why are you calling me good? There's nobody good. There's nobody good but God. But you got jokers living out their fantasy in the ministry. Man, this is work, man. This is hard work. And I'm just confess. I don't always do a good job with it. So why did I bring that up? You mil how many military people I got? You was in the military. You wanted to go in the military. You know somebody in the military. Remember I said when you joined the military, they don't tell you about all this stuff. They don't tell you they own you. You actually sign a contract, right? I ain't sign up for that. Well, they got a record that you did. You got to sign up, and you, got, you sign on for everything we said. And I got to feel that when Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. We riding down the Audubon. I'm going to war. I'm saying I can't believe it. But it's for that reason that I agreed to go in the military. If you are squeamish about that, don't even play around with it, because it could happen, right? Now, there's this thing called movement in the military. I got some Marines in here. Don't miss your unit's movement. When they deploy, you be there. Even if you're missing some equipment, don't miss. You better be there. When this unit moves, you better be there. I'm going to say it, and again, this sounds coarse. Every swing in Richard, you can decipher that. Every brother better be here. Leave your pot behind, leave your stuff behind, because we can get you some more stuff. What we can't replace is you. I found out in my research, Elder Beth, for Colleen, because I thought I was going to be telling them, and I will tell them. I told Pastor Valerie I would. This is so serious, not missing movement. Do you know that they inserted it into the UCMJ, the Uniform Code of Military Justice, punishable by fines? and maybe even imprisonment in worst cases if you don't show up for the move? Amen. You got people in my age. They're not showing up for the move. I'm saying, God's saying, I don't want no child left behind. You check me. It's Article 87 of the United States Code of Military Justice. Whatever you miss, don't miss this move. Spirit of God is moving. Holy Ghost is moving. God is on the march. God is on the move. We're all one unit. We're all one body. And if we're a part of that body, then when the heads say move, we move. When the heads say stand still, we stand still. You may ask why. 
but the head don't have to tell you. I want to know, can I count on you? In fact, when they got into the River Jordan, if you read the fine print, he said, when you, your feet get in the water, it'll part, but I want you to stand in the middle of the river till I stay stopped. Can you follow instructions? No one here is better than anyone else. We all need the Lord. God is on the move, and I want to move with him. Have I helped anybody today? Have I helped anybody? No, if I help somebody, I want you to get on your feet and give God praise. God, I've been helped. I've been helped. Pastor, we have the word for the church. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Stand at attention there. Pastor um, has notified me that he has a word to give unto the church. So give him a microphone. And see, and this is what happens. This is, we don't want to rush God. Yes, Pastor. Yeah, I didn't plan on this because I just wanted to come down and worship and, and receive the word. Uh, but there are two things that have stood out, and I, I share these because one's affirmation, and one is to give perspective on something that, is, that has happened to you and is pouring out on the house. Uh, it's something that the Lord is doing globally. The first thing, I want to remind, when you began to pray, and when specifically you were praying, you said, Lord, the blue angels are flying over. Um, the Lord, as I looked at you while you were praying, I saw a, a pillar. And I saw the pillar that God had raised up. And as I saw the pillar, what God raises up and who God raises up is more permanent than any building that's in the locale. Even any authorized, even as you are in the center right here. There's, there's a government arena, there's government buildings, there's voices. All those things seem permanent. But what God raises up, and when God raises up a vessel, when God raises up a voice, that voice carries a greater authority, has even a greater sense of permanency. Even though you physically haven't been around as long as some buildings have been around, you actually are more resolute and more sturdy and more powerful. And I didn't know you were going to, don't, I don't know what's going on over there, but I just want to encourage you and I want to affirm you and, and Pastor Margo and the house that what God raises up has a greater strength and voice and residency and, and hold more weight even than seemingly the things around that carry almost a bigger intimidating, no, 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 God raised up. And as you pray, I saw you and I saw you as a spiritual pillar and thus the house is a spiritual pillar. It's not a fly by night. It's not a fly, and it has such weight in this area, and I believe the Lord would just have me affirm the way you've been brought back to certain stories, the way you've been brought back to certain things to remember the majesty of God when he plants a people and a couple and a body somewhere. The residency when his word goes forth. You're not just in a building doing a thing as you said, but there is something about the beauty and the majesty of Jesus when there are servants who will faithfully proclaim who he is. Amen. This is the second thing I want to say that's just going to give you context as you share it. I want to just read the scripture and bear with me because it will make sense. Luke 3. Verse 1 it says, Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, governor of Judea, Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of Iturea, and the region of Trachonitis, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, while Annas and Caiaphas were high priests, the word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. context on the verse, it starts out with all of the Roman leaders and the governmental facilities, then it goes to the high priest or the religious institution. But the word of God comes to the son of a priest, and that son, we don't know how he ends up, but God has him in the wilderness. It's John's ability to be priestly in the wilderness to minister to the Lord where there's not the fancy buildings, where there's not the religious institution, where it's dry. You mentioned COVID and everything of the last two years. The Lord has actually sent 
his church globally into the wilderness so that they can learn to be priestly. God is redeeming and bringing his church into what, what, what it needs to be, and he's doing it globally. And it's the capacity to be able to be priestly in the wilderness that exposes that there's not the word of God in government or false religious institutions, but it's in a people that know how to get a hold, come on, of the springs of life where there's no water, but yet water is able to flow. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is this is something the Lord has done in me and I know he's doing it in you. And so it blesses me to be with you is that you and I didn't choose the wilderness, but it's where God sent us because as we steward houses, God must do first in the head as it flows to the body. And I, I want to commend you because in the pain and the agony, the frustration, and even, come on, the exposure from sun in the wilderness, you have put your heart and said, I will minister to Jesus and so the word of the Lord comes to the man in the wilderness. But no, no, who did everyone go out to see? They didn't stay with the government leaders. They didn't stay in the religious institution. The people in the place where they should have had access to everything left it and went to the dry, barren place to a people who knew how to get a hold of God. They came to John the Baptist in the wilderness and so there's going to be people here in Dover who know come to the people here at Crossroad because they found a place where people know how to get a hold of the word of God, know how to get a hold of God's presence and can have peace and power and deliverance seemingly in the midst of a dry land. And here's how I share this last part so that you, again, it's just to give perspective, I believe, for what's happening here in the house. When Jesus spoke about John the Baptist, he said, he didn't say, who did men go out to hear? He said, who did men go out to see? Because it's not about the information as you've been sharing. It's about the transformation. John's life was the message. And what I speak over you and I speak over the body is that this is a house where your lives are becoming the message. The lives are becoming the message. So, Father, I thank you for the word of the Lord in this house. I thank you, Lord, it's not weird, it's not feeling, but it comes straight from Scripture that Jesus might be revealed. And, Father, I thank you for Crossroad. I thank you for every person here that lives are becoming the message that people want to encounter you, Jesus, and you always ask us to partner with you. So be formed in us. Lord, be formed in us. Be formed in us that people might see you in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, wow. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you, Pastor. I just got one question. Are you glad... God held us over time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm going I'm to get naked. I mean, I, I just, that, and I'm trusting the Lord. I don't want to do it just because, but I want to help somebody because I, I just, you know, I, I've struggled. I've struggled as a pastor. I've struggled as a pastor in this season. I wanted to quit. I called somebody. You know, I said, I, can you take this? I want to enlighten you because we want to come out with all the stuff that we think is going to help you to have confidence in us. All that can go to hell. I don't care anymore. I'm done caring too much about the wrong thing. It's going to take all of us, every last one of us. Young folks, it's going to take you. I was telling my son the other day, he was in a bad accident. I said, son, you got as much future in front of you 
as I have passed behind me. And so we need to talk. Because some of the things that God has put in me, they're for people whose assignment is in the current and in the future. Amen. And we got to be okay with that. And so there's such a feeling, Margot, of contentment these last maybe three weeks or so as I wrestled with all that. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. This is a bad man right here. This, this is a bad dude, man. I'm telling you. It's a bad dude. And... Um, Without belaboring the point, Chris, it's, it's been too long. We're going to have you, you and Dana come back and, and uh, minister God, God's presence and God's word to us. We love you, man. We love your church. Um, word of Life Christian Center on Old Baltimore Pike in Newcastle. He's a bear. He's a bear, right? Newark. 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 Um, so you can look it up on the web, but powerful church, powerful legacy. And um, my brother from another mother, for sure. <laughs> Bow your heads. Now, should there be anyone here? I believe that decisions have been made in your seat, as it were, that you choose Jesus today. And you recognize, like me, you may not be far from God, but you're a little farther than you need to be and you want to be, a little farther than God wants you to be. So I want to encourage you to draw near. Right there where you are, draw near in your heart, speak to the Father. He loves you. Rectify that situation. God, I, I, I was wrong. I, you never left. I left. I started sliding away. I was tired. The reason doesn't matter. God loves you. God wants to bring you back. God has need of you. And so as he deals with whatever pride or misconceptions or wrong notions in our lives about him and his relationship, just walk with him. Walk with him. Commit right there in your heart. Commit in your heart. I will follow Jesus. No turning back. I've decided to follow Jesus and I won't turn back. If that's you and you made that decision right there where you are, would you just wave your hand at me while heads are bowed and eyes are closed? Just raise your hand and say, I'm renewing my commitment. Thank you. Others, I see those hands. Others, thank you so, so much. So much. God is in this place. And I'm going to encourage you also, um, it's helpful if you let someone know. Um, our office phone number is there on your, on your materials, or you can uh, see an usher or a greeter and let them know. Let's, let's exchange information and let's get into a relationship as we serve God together. Now, Father, we look to you and we praise you for this time together. We believe that it's been productive. We believe that it brings glory to you. It brings gain to others, and it brings growth to us. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for kissing us with affirmation. We know there's a, there's a lot that we could improve on, but to know that you love us and you affirm us in this place by your spirit, we're so grateful and thankful. And may we respond and reciprocate in like manner to serve you without reservation, hesitation, or procrastination all the days of our life. Make every crooked thing straight. May every superfluous, extra, unprofitable thing fall down, fall off of us. And may your abiding love and peace be ours from this day forward. I bless every house, every home, every person, every family, our community, those that serve. Be in this place in Jesus' name. As we go from this place, we're never from your presence. We give you praise and honor as we go. In Jesus' name, all God's people said amen. 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 God bless you. Love you.